Hello everyone. In this video, let's talk about cascading parameter. So in the previous videos, we have covered regular component parameters, rod parameters. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to talk about cascading parameter. Uh, so if we have a component tree like this, where we have the page component that contains several levels of component. Um, so these component these components uh, make the tree a little bit uh, complicated. So in this case, if we want to pass a parameter value from the first level, from the page level, down to the leaf, uh, if we want to use the regular parameter, we have to pass the parameters as many times as, as the number of levels that a component tree has. So one way that Microsoft has came up with to solve this problem is they created something that is called cascading parameter. It's something that you can use to cascade a value from whichever level downward to the lower level components. You don't have to cascade one by one. Uh, okay, let's jump to the computer and see how it's implemented. All right, and this is a standard template uh, Blazor template, it comes from Microsoft. And we go to the counter page, you can see when we click on it, uh, the current count increases. So we're going to modify this to um, mimic a scenario where we have many levels of components. We're going to create uh, another two level. So all together we have three levels. So this is the counter component. Let's uh, create two more components. Let's create two more components. Let's call it component one and component two. And in order to distinguish them, I'm going to add some uh, CSS style. So we're going to add some margin. Um, to component one, and then I'm going to add another margin to component two, which will cause some indentation so that we can see the different levels. So with this, we are, instead of dis displaying the current count inside the counter component, we are going to remove this. And we are going to display the counter count in the component number two, right? But before we do that, um, we are going to um, add the, the components in. Uh, we have component one, and then within component one, we add component two, right? So component one contains component two and counter component contains component one, right? So if we uh, refresh our page, right? So we're gonna see com component one and component two like this with the margin indicating the different levels of components. So uh, now I want to display the uh, counter value inside component two, right? How do we do that? We need to wrap our components with a cascading value element. And we're gonna tell the, we're gonna tell Blazor that this value is called counter and the value itself it comes from the current, the current count. And we wrap this component one with it. So current count is here. So what happens is that when we click on the button, it calls this event handler and it increases the count. And this current count is passed into the component tree. No matter how deep the tree is, how many, how many levels the tree has, uh, you can access this count value.
from within the components. So let's say you want to access from component two. You can actually access from component one or component two or both, right? So uh, in this video, let's directly go to component two and we're trying to display the count here, right? So let's say um, I want to tell that the count is the count is uh, is the the counter value, right? And to do that, we need to declare a parameter, and that is the same type. Um, and the name can be any name. Let's call it counter value. Uh, but the uh, we have to decorate it with this cascading parameter, and we tell it sorry we tell it name of this cascading parameter is counter, right? That's the same name that we give it here, right? Uh, so you can name your cascading parameter with anything but then as long as you declare that the uh, in the attribute part that you make sure that this counter value name is the same uh, with the name that you declared inside the cascading value element right so now with this setup you would be able to rate this counter value uh, directly from the counter component, the parent component, uh, the ancestor component, right? It will contain this value. So let's see uh, whether we'll get it, get the correct value. So we're gonna display this value right here, counter value. And then we're gonna go back and refresh our page. All right, so now it shows counter value zero. And when you can increase, when we increase this, it goes up. Okay, so we have successfully passed down the counter value. So this uh, helps us a lot uh, when we want to pass values around the component tree. Um, it's very convenient. One of the disadvantages of this is that when you have, when you need to pass the values around all of the components in the component tree, uh, the Blazor framework would have to monitor all of the components. You have just one cascading value that you want to cascade, then the Blazor would have to monitor all of the components if you want to pass the value to all of the components. For example, uh, about a theme, a theme of your application. Once you set it, it, it has to be accessed by all of the components and the component, each one of the components will, will monitor, monitor the change of that uh, theme. Once it changes, then each, every one of the component will change. So this kind of makes the um, Blazor framework have too much to handle, right? If you have just one variable to cascade, it adds a lot of work. And then you have two, then it has more work. It has three, then it has even more work. So by the way, let's see how um, we want to cascade multiple parameters. How do we do that? Okay, so let's do that first, and then we'll come back to the drawback to the um, uh, to one of the problem with this, and how we can fix this, and how we can fix this um, kind of a performance issue, right? Because when Blazor has too much to monitor, it takes too much resources, and, and it causes performance issue, especially with Blazor server side, that the uh, it monitors each user has his own session and uh, it hosts the session state and everything so that's um, if you give it more work with uh, with the cascading parameters it's going to create more uh, performance issues so we're going to go come back in a, in a film in a minute let's uh, see how we can implement multiple cascading parameters so let's go to counter and uh, let's just uh, cascade Let's say uh, we want to change the, the 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 color of that. So we would add another level of cascading parameter, and we call it you know we call it 
uh, let's say um, title color and value is I'm gonna directly give it a value right here I'm gonna say the uh, value is it is blue right and now we can go to our component child component we can declare declare another cascading parameter and making sure that the title matches and here it doesn't matter we'll just call it color and then uh, we are going to modify the the color right we call it uh, we call this color value here and if we refresh we're expecting the level two component i mean the component two becomes blue refreshing it's not blue and why is that title counter title color oh title color all right so it's blue all right so we're now we're actually cascading multiple uh levels uh, sorry multiple cascading parameters multiple, multiple values so let's go back to the point that i was trying to make about the performance issue so um and this is actually a good example that we are cascading a color to down to the component two right uh, but it's static means that it's not changing like the counter the count value it increases or decreases uh, it's static it's fixed so but even though it's fixed because we have we have declared the cascading parameter here Blazor framework will still try to monitor this and, and try to see whether this color will change, but it's actually not going to change. But this is actually a text resource from, uh, from the laser framework, right? Um, so it will actually impact the performance. So one way we can avoid this is to come over here and say, you know, uh, this is a fixed, this is a fixed, value so when we go back and refresh it's not going to affect it it's going to still work you're going to not you're going to you're not going to see any differences but um but it's going to avoid the performance impact so this is what you need to do when you need to cascade uh, a fixed parameter for example if you have a uh, different department right you have order department you have sales department you have different departments and if uh, each department has its own page component and each page component has uh, its own complicated complicated uh, component tree but inside those inside the two component trees you you want those child components to know about which page component you're in i mean the order department component tree or i mean in the sales department component tree i want to know the department right so this type of value although it changes when you click on you will never get to the the page component but it will once you are there it, it, it's never changes so in this case you should in, uh, use the is fixed equals to true to tell blazer framework that the value of the cascading parameter will never change so this will, in, will will not impact the performance, will not affect the performance. So that's something we need to pay attention to. Another thing we need to know about is that a cascading parameter, it can only you can only cascade it down. You cannot pass the value upward. So one way to resolve that issue is to add some event callback or add a um, um, delegate parameter basically a regular component parameter 
that is de declared as a delegate and then from the parent uh, we register to the delegate and uh, when you click on the button you trigger that delegate basically you trigger the function inside a parent component and then your parent component uh, react to that handles that delegate and increases the counter increases the variable in the defined in the parent component so that's one way to do it but um, if you have many levels you have to pass you have to declare that delegate parameter for many levels uh, up to the top components right and that's uh, that's a pretty in my opinion that's not a very good way to do it uh, if we go down that route, I would uh, suggest to use a uh, centralized uh, state management, which I'm going to cover in later uh, episodes. So that's the other thing I want to, the, the other point that I want to make, uh, which is that we cannot pass parameters up the component tree. Um, of uh, another thing that we really need to pay attention when we use cascading parameter is that it can quickly become pretty messy right so when you have a when you have a complicated uh component tree like this uh, you can have the cascade you can just declare that cascading parameter cascading value element on any levels and then uh, on any lower levels you can receive that with different names and if you can if you you come over here for example you click on this and you say okay I want to I want to know where this value come from right so you can't right click and go definition because it will not go anywhere right this is defined right here you click on it you know it's it's you can follow it you don't know where it's defined right so when you have many many levels so this is not as many levels as this is not too complicated but when you have many levels um, when you have very big trees you don't even know where it's defined right and you have to use search uh, in in your uh, IDE to find it in your Visual Studio to find it which is not as, as pleasant it can quickly become pretty messy so um, again in in those cases where you want to uh, use uh, when you have uh, you find yourself that you declare you find yourself declaring a lot of cascading parameter values cascading parameters uh, that's probably a sign to tell you that you should use uh, a centralized state management uh, system instead of using the cascading parameters so we should really use the cascading parameters um, sparingly and that's the video for today. If you like my videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. In my next video, I'm going to cover the event callback for components. Thank you very much for watching.